Hey guys, how are you? This is Dr. Kim. So I want you to look at this periapical radiograph. Let's pay close attention to um, tooth number 27. Here we have canine, lower right canine. Look at the overall shape of the root um, as we follow the PDL space as best as we can. At about this area, it appears that the apical portion is even uh, more bulbous and actually more uh, larger than the rest of the root. I shouldn't say rest, but right about here you're seeing the increased size of the uh, apex, right? So this is due to hypersementosis. Think of this as an excess deposition of uh, cementum and um, it's hard to see where the out original outline of the root apex is. If I had to guess, it will probably come down something like that. And so this is how the uh, how hypersementosis appears. It has this bulbous appearance toward the apex of the root, or in some cases, it can affect pretty much the entire length of the root as well. One how this differentiates from some other potential periapical uh, opacity is that because this is deposited directly on top of the root you don't see any uh, a PDL space separating the root from the opacity so it's a gradual uh, uh, transition of the same uh, root material so that's the uh, hypersementosis uh, in terms of clinical significance, probably the one that's most uh, common is the difficulty of extracting this tooth, as you might imagine. Just having to extract that tooth from the socket and you, you have this uh, enlarged uh, apical portion, it's obviously going to be more difficult. Another thing that you may have noticed is there is a relatively well-defined radio opacity in this area and this is consistent with mandibular torus okay mandibular torus that's uh, what it is and now let's take a look at the uh, next radiograph so you can still make out the out outlines of the mandibular torus um, especially at the mesial aspect. I think it's a little more difficult for its posterior border. Let's look at this first premolar. Once again, we have this bulbous enlargement of the root um, and that's consistent with hypersementosis. However, what's interesting is that there is this large, I shouldn't say large, but there's a around radiolucency that has apparently caused resorption of the root and you're also seeing a tooth with a large coronal restoration and I believe this is a three unit bridge um, so uh, this is a case where the tooth has uh, developed apical periodontitis and with as a result of chronic inflammation at the apex it has actually caused a resorption of the root or the hypersementosis hence this kind of irregular appearance uh, of the lesion of the entity um, yeah again this probably is the original outline of the root and you have this excess deposition of cementum I hope you found this case interesting and I'll see you in the next video. Well, well, just before I <laughs> close the video, I noticed this area. Um, it certainly doesn't have that smooth outline, so we should definitely consider uh, calculus. And I don't know when this crown was placed. Looks like we can't see it very well on the bite wing radiograph. So calculus would be a, a first thing to consider, but also depending on when this bridge was inserted or seeded, we could also consider uh, excess cementum.
but presuming that this crown or the bridge was done long time ago and we have this chronic inflammation probably the calculus would be my first differential diagnosis thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video take care guys